Great, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic from which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey. Here. 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 Um, we'll start with uh, authorization to pay all approved and ordered claims in the amount of two hundred six thousand four hundred forty four dollars and thirty six cents. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And uh, tonight we have a presentation. Um, so, uh, Pittengaro and Deutsch consulting engineers have been working on a project for us for a little bit. Um, well, number three, uh, which is uh, we're revamping it at, um, in terms of a treatment plant. And I guess we're close to a final design. Is that what you're presenting to us tonight? Yeah. Great. So, uh, Jason, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. I'm Jason Pittengaro from Pittengaro and Deutsch. And I'll give you guys I guess each. These are reduced size. I think it'll be easier to follow along than pointing at a screen or a Great. full size plan. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, the details and some of the details by that, I mean, the, the generic stuff that accompanies a lot of plans that cited and bothering through those sheets because it's kind of a perfunctory uh, and a waste of paper. But we can go over the treatment process and some of the background of the project. Um, take any questions you guys have tonight and uh, talk a little bit about what the next steps are. So, um, as the mayor mentioned, I think as far back as 2008, the village started looking at this, and at that time, um, a map plan and report was prepared by a different office that I had worked at previously, and or some ideas were, were, were came came out of some planning back then. And then subsequently, a map plan and report was prepared by that office. That's a, a plan that describes, um, you know, the options that you have for the treatment process or, or the whatever project it is that you're doing. And then it, it gives a dollar amount for that project, and it talks about how that project might be funded in terms of um, uh, what its impact is to the, the rate payers. Uh, and I guess I should back up a little bit uh, since, you know, I don't know how much of the water system everybody's familiar with. The village has uh, three water supplies, the reservoir, there's two wells in Memorial Park <clears throat> that feed the microfiltration plant there, and then there's this which well, which is called Well 3, which is behind Homestead uh, Village. And uh, those reservoir plan and the wells in, the, in Memorial Park provide basically all of the village's water. This well, Well 3, um, is a backup well uh, that is capable of producing uh, 300 gallons per minute. So that's a pretty uh, substantial amount of water for a single well. And it hasn't been run as a permanent well because it is under the influence of surface water. So it's groundwater under the influence, influence of surface water, which is termed witty by the, the health department, New York State Health Department and the, the local health departments. So what that means is that if you took a sample of the water from there, you would find either particulate matter or other um, viruses, uh, Giardia, whatever, that may have entered from the surface, meaning that the, you know, because it's a gravel well and it's shallow, surface water could get in there. The reason why that's important is because it raises the level of treatment that needs to be performed on the well. It needs to have uh, I think five and a half log removal for some viruses and four log removal for some others, depending. Right now it only has uh, a chlorination system. So when that well, if it were to be operated, needs to have a boil water notice issued for it to put it into, to turn it on basically. But uh, functionally, the well is a good producer, so that's a positive. Um, also, the infrastructure to connect it, it's already connected to the water system, so it makes sense to make the well more permanent and usable so that the village can do other maintenance and operations on either the reservoir plant or the, the other facility. So I think that's just some background in case uh, to get back to where I was. Where I was. Um, so anyway, we were asked to look at the options that were in the map plan and report 
and uh, finalize the design, and that's where we are now. So um, the design calls for uh, a pleated filter system, which is kind of like a pre-filtration device, um, and it'll go through a five micron filter, and then it'll go through a uh, one micron absolute filter. Those remove the larger particles. There's still particles or uh, other organisms that can't be removed and uh, aren't treated through chlorine uh, or disinfection typically, especially when you go back underground with the water. So those are going to be treated through UV. Uh, the way we've designed the plant is we've used as much of what's there as we can, but there's really not much there to use. Um, and we've tried to make it as simple to operate and uh, use since we know it's going to be used fairly infrequently or maybe used infrequently but robust enough that it can be used in a more permanent fashion and some of the ways we did that is the filters are um, the five micron filter is a serviceable filter which means you can take it out and, and clean, clean it off uh, theoretically a number of times it'll depend on how much particulates are in the in the well once you get it off the running. This is a, uh, one micron filter needs to be replaced. It's not a serviceable filter. So every, depending on how often you run it, that filter would have to be replaced. But to allow the plant to keep running, there's two sets or trains of filters. Um, so those features, you can shut once one train or one line route off and service that while the other one is still up and running. So that's an important redundancy. Um, and it doesn't, it's not all that cumbersome and expensive to do that. Um, the next phase of the treatment is the UV treatment, and that is uh, more expensive. And it's a device that, uh, I don't want to say services itself, but it has a cleaning mechanism built in. Um, you're able to change the bulbs without taking it out of service. And also, it, you it won't need services often as the filter. So there's only one UV system that is in line. Um, so you can work on the filters, keep the UV up and running and the other train up and running and have the plant remain functional. So that will give you the flexibility to run this as a plant that's producing the, whatever it is, 400,000 gallons a day that it can produce while you're doing work on one of the other facilities. So um, just a little bit more data. Um, for reference, in 2020, the water usage for the village had gone down quite a bit. It's at about 600,000 gallons a year. I think when we originally looked at this, the water usage was closer to seven or 800,000 gallons. So I don't know if there was maybe some leaks that were repaired or other, other uh, usage changes that uh, have uh, occurred, but that's good. Commercial uh, usage went down, I'm assuming, from the pandemic? I would imagine there there was some re reduction in commercial use, but there was probably some increase in residential use. But uh, a lot of places we've seen it has offset that. Uh, you know, we represent a bunch of municipalities <coughs> in Orange County. Um, you know, in Wallkill, for instance, the commercial uses had gone down, and that's a primarily commercial area there. So there was some decrease, but I would imagine I don't know the specifics. You'd have to look at the metering. Uh, but it has gone down, and that's a good thing, you know, uh, whether it's water saving or, or what it was that's the benefit. But at, at focus 600,000 gallons, um, this well is going to be able to produce up to about 350,000 gallons a day. So that would be enough to offset one of the other facilities if you were to take it offline. And I think that was the objective of, of what's going on here. Um, you know, building something like this is a significant investment, so there is a building that is to be constructed as well. It's about 28 feet by 20 foot, um, and the caisson that looks kind of like a, a small uh, silo, it's adjoining that building, would be left, and that's where the well is, it would be left in there. Um, that's existing? The caisson is existing, and then there's also a small building that's existing that has, um, I don't know how deep the foundation is off the top of my head, but it, it has basically a small basement area. And what we've done is, uh, to maintain things as, as easily as possible, we've kept that in place in, in most of the building. 
we went, uh, our office went through a number of iterations of what we thought was the most e economical way to do this. So what we did is we came up out of that, that caisson, came across underneath and into the existing building using that space below. And then the idea is to knock down the top portion of the building and build right on top of what's already there using a portion of the existing foundation. Then the other area will be slab and then we'll tie right back into almost the same spot, which nobody's 100% sure where it is, where it leaves the building underground and goes back into connecting to the uh, existing uh, distribution system. What we found, not just through here, but in most places is, you know, uh, projects get much more expensive when you start moving outside the bounds of the building and, and trying to reconnect to plumbing or distribution system or intake that's not in the same spot. We also just did uh, some turbine wells like this. I think it was in Suffern and what we found is that uh, it may have been in the village of Cornwall, I don't remember which one. But when the, when the, um, the, the pitless unit or the unit that goes on top of the well uh, needs to be custom made, the price becomes double. So to use one that's a standard item um, which will exit a little lower instead of coming up and over, uh, I think is going to save a bunch of cost as well too. And I think it makes it easier um, in terms of obtaining materials as well. I have a question. Is, sure. is the bathroom needed? The bathroom... The, 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 like the is water, that a requirement? The water treatment plant operators have asked that there is a bathroom there. I, it, what they have said is that... Um, <clears throat> I mean, that they're going to go to the bathroom one way or another, and there is there is there is some need to have water running all the time, because the way your system works is you need to have a certain amount of maybe I should have covered this already. You need to have a certain amount of activation time when you chlorinate for the water to um, be considered treated. So the way your system works is either you have a very large storage vessel to get that time for the water to mix with the uh, hyperchlorite, or you use a long length of oversized pipe, which in this case you can because you don't have any customers or connections for quite some distance. So you guys have a long section, I think of 24 inch pipe that uh, provides the mixing volume for your facility. But what that does is you need to take a, a copper line or a return line from the end of that and bring it back into the building so that um, you can test the residual and make sure it's completely maintained. And that loop runs constantly. That's the, that's the chlorine analyzers. It, yeah, it'll, feed, it'll go to the chlorine an analyzers. So that, um, and we've used that actually redundantly twice in this new design. One is because the UV needs to have a certain amount of flow to it at all times to keep the bulbs cool, so you don't have to wait as long to turn it on and turn it off, like a warm-up period, for the lights to get to uh, a certain intensity, which provides the treatment, which is like 40 millijoules per centimeter squared. So we've used that return water to continually circulate through the UV um, to keep it on for when it circulates on and off. So that'll keep the UV cool, and then that water will also feed the bathroom. So there was water and potable water going to be in the facility anyway. If you, uh, if you want to do away with the bathroom, there's still certain features that you're going to need to have, like an eye wash station um, and a shower facility because there are chemicals in there. So besides the toilet, there's not much. You would need a sink anyway to do sampling that you're going to save on that. Uh, what we did with the bathroom is we ran it to a, a, like an oversized septic tank and since it's going to be used infrequently and there are, is some backwash that's going to be generated by the facility, that'll go to the that tank and that could be pumped uh, as necessary, but it won't be that often. Um, there was some uh, contemplation of connecting to one of the small roads across from Old Wagon in Homestead, which would come into here. If that is done eventually, that tank could be converted to a pump station and pump uh, the sewage over to uh, Homestead into the, the um, wastewater treatment system. And also that access would allow easier access to the facility if, uh, 
you know, you're going to have to get deliveries of chemical and whatnot there. The, the current access is off of 17A, and it's not in the most um, strategic locations, let's say. But there's an easement, and that's the really the place where it needs to be maintained. So having that secondary access would be a benefit in a number of ways. But um, I think to keep costs down right now, that's not something that was included with this design. But something that's pretty easily convertible. It, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. ready to go. And again, with a <laughs> tank like that, all you'd end up doing is putting a pump there. And when you put the road, whether it's gravel or, or asphalt, you would uh, just lay your force main in there. It's pretty simple. Straightforward. I was under the impression that there is quite a bit of backwash in the filtration system. So is it all going into the septic tank? Well, it, the, the filter itself get cert will be getting service so it's not like a backwash per se a pool or a number of other different types of filtration systems this is a little different it's a it's made to have it's made for this type of um, location where there aren't as readily available facilities so it's not it's like a the fabric. plant it's a fabric basically a yeah. fabric or a canister filter like you'd have in a home okay so you're not going to uh, like forcefully backwash like you would with a pool filter, or like an earth, like a DE filter, or a number of other types of filter um, or water treatment plants. A lot of places do have backwash, but this one doesn't have that similar type of backwash now. Okay. Thanks for answering the questions. Sure. Kind so, of a, a thought on, op on operations. So because the well will be sitting quiet for a lot of the long time, for long periods of time. When that gets turned on, is that, should that bypass the plant until it settles into a cleaner? Yeah, water? I think the way we have it arranged right now is when it comes up first, it'll go, it can go out the side of that caisson out into that larger lawn area and be discharged to waste for a while. Right. Um, and then you could, you know, whatever it is, you know, uh, Keith Herbert, who's your operator, would make some kind of judgment as to what, uh, right. when he thinks it's ready to be turned on. That's the other thing with the five micron filter. That's going to catch the majority of the particulates, is, which is what you're going to get um, in that first flush. And that filter is the serviceable filter. Right. So should you have turned it on or should you have seen a spike in turbidity or, or some uh, higher loading, that filter could always be... That train could be turned off, the other one turned on once it's running, that filter pulled, cleaned, hosed down, or soaked, and then put back into service. <coughs> and that can be done at the facility? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the filter cartridges, I don't know exactly how big this canister is, but my guess is that the filter cartridges are about this big in diameter, and probably about this tall. And there'll be four or five of them, I don't remember exactly what this canister has in it. They, it depends on your flow rate. You could have more or less. There'll be four or five of them in that canister, which is just basically looks like a big stainless steel barrel. And it has um, some lock nuts on top that the top flips open. You pull those guys out and then you could service them and spray them down. Um, you could pressure wash them if you wanted to, or you could soak them in like a, a garbage pail or something like that with a solution that would uh, like muriatic or something that mm -hmm. would clean them off. Um, thoughts on the UV equipment manufacturer? Um, we, it's going to be or equal, but what's yeah, the, we spec what a Trojan spec? unit. Um, you know, there's a lot of options out there. We look at different projects, whether it's water or wastewater, and look at different manufacturers and see what we think is the best fit. Uh, I think Trojan is a little bit uh, of a more reliable outfit and a more reliable manufacturer. Um, I think it has a, a more robust cleaning system, um, which is more important in water than, say, in wastewater. Uh, but we've used, used them both. I mean, we're doing, in the wastewater side, we're finishing or uh, the construction of uh, UV treatment <coughs> for Stony Point right now, and that one we use the Trojan system, but in the village of Florida, we're finishing the design of a wastewater treatment UV, and we're using, I think, Anaqua there, which is another brand. I know that you guys put uh, a different um, UV system down here, Glasgow, at the wastewater treatment plant, and um, 
you know, we were a little apprehensive about using Glasgow. Um, you know, it's a little bit smaller of an operation, and uh, the UV treatment in wastewater is seasonal, but in, you know, in this, I think when we go there and turn this on, we really want it to work and not have any problems with it. So I think the Trojan is just a more robust unit. And horizontal lamps. Yes, yes. You mentioned the um, the operators talked about the the bathroom. To what extent were they involved in the rest of the design and the layout? Um, they were involved in the particular layout of this, but um, your main operator is Keith Herbert, mm -hmm. and um, we talk to Keith probably every few days because uh, he operates a lot of the facilities around here, whether it's Florida. We do all the work for the Village of Florida. Uh, Village of Ocean. Uh, we've done this project here. We do um, a, a lot of work with that group, so we're pretty familiar. And uh, you know, he gave input early on, and then we've kind of taken that and melded it into the design that we have here. So he's fully aware, I think, of what we have proposed here. He's wanted other stuff, which um, if he was here tonight, he would tell you that he would <laughs> he would prefer to have like a, a full blown SCADA, which is the communication system, yeah. which you have the components, the main components in your filter plant in Memorial Park, mm -hmm. and he would like them to be able to talk to each other remotely. That is a great feature. We designed a two and a half billion dollar SCADA system for Walk Hill, um, but. You know, that wasn't part of the project here in terms of the budget originally. Um, and it could be added later. All of the equipment, like you'll see the analyzers have Modbus connection or Ethernet connection. So those could be plugged into a SCADA system in the future if you decide to do that. And I'm imagining that at some point the SCADA system and the control system that you have either, I don't know that if you have SCADA at the reservoir plant, um, trying to remember I think yes we, we do. do yes yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. it could either You've be got pump stations yeah you could either be integrated with that or if at some point you decide to renew everything it could be integrated at that point yeah, uh, or I'm, you know you may get some funding through a grant or something else that allows you to do that in the future as well too at, at this point what would what do you think would be the the additional cost of adding the SCADA? The SCADA? Um, I would say it's thirty to forty thousand dollars. It's I don't think it's overly expensive. I think at this point the facility has grown in cost. Um, I think everything has grown in cost right now. It's very hard I would even say to pinpoint a cost of stuff. Um, but I think we're looking at something in the order of one point you know one to one point three million dollars to execute all this work right now. Uh, there's also as I'm sure you're finding with everything, an unbelievable lead time on product. Um, we are just helping the town with the plants in Pine Islands Park that kind of blew up and they had to put an emergency plant in place. And um, literally the contractor went around and bought every uh, pressure vessel that he could find in like a tri-state area to get that up and running and built it all at the shop and dropped it off there to get them water to that little district on Treasure Lane there or whatever it is. Um, it wouldn't have had any water otherwise because the facility literally was a pneumatic that blew up. So, you know, there's going to be issues with getting material. Hopefully that subsides a little. We're just sizing uh, a, a silo that feeds um, a powder activated carbon for Village of Florida's uh, water treatment plant. And when we met with the manufacturer, they said it was a year lead time. Wow. So wow. there is or a, a long lead time on stuff. This has backup generator. There'll be a little bit of a lead time on that too, but um, you know, it's not a huge generator. And uh, it's something that's, you know, could be it's not added, but could be wired in, um, you know, when the project is completed. So not something that would hold the project up. Uh, specified manufacturer on the uh, the generator? generator. I think it's Generac, um, and it was diesel, but I it's in here. Uh, okay. It's a 60 kW Generac SD 060 or equivalent. So that was the generator. The, you mentioned earlier that the Micron filter will have to be replaced instead of like cleaned when, and that's 
How often would it be replaced if it ended up being used regularly, if the facility was used regularly? Uh, it would depend because it would depend on how much particulates are in the water. But I would imagine it would probably not be replaced uh, more than once, probably every eight months or so. And there's a number of filters in there. And there's two sets of filters. The five micron gets a service. The one micron needs to be replaced. The one micron absolute filter um, does not allow anything smaller than one micron, or larger rather, than one micron to pass. And it's very important because you don't get, I think you get two log uh, deactivation for uh, the filtration and then another three and a half for the UV. Um, so you need to get to that five and a half log uh, removal to get adequate treatment when you have gritty water. If you had a well like um, that was a not a shallow well, this well is I think it's 40 or 60 feet deep. It's 45 and a half foot deep, and it's six foot with gravel pack around it. So a shallow gravel aquifer well, um, what you find is that that has a lot of flow rate, but it's also influenced by surface water. Uh, town of Wauquiel has uh, the Wauquiel River running along its boundary. They have 18 or 19 uh, wells there, and um, those are shallow gravel wells as well. They can produce up to 9 million gallons a day with those uh, wells, or they're permitted to withdraw that much water. Um, so that type of well is very productive, but you have to deal with the surface water conditions that come with it. Can you remind me if the vi is a vision to have this used regularly, or just to have it as a backup, it's a, it's a back and then it's a, in case something happened, then it could if, be used regularly? If there was an emergency, one of the plants went down, kick this in. Um, if there was... Um, you know, a, a planned outage of one of the plants, then this would be the substitute source for water to meet the village's needs. Okay. So it's an opportunity, I think, for redundancy in the system. Um, I think it's important uh, right now, uh, both the EPA and um, DEC or, and uh, DOH are asking Florida to do the same thing, look for other sources so they have a redundant source too. So it's important to have that. I don't know if the, the new trustees are familiar with the size of the aquifer that this really um, draws from, but the aquifer starts at just uh, above Homestead Village and actually stretches all the way down through ni until 90, Route 94, correct? Well, it, it, at least Sanfordville Road area. Yes. So, so it, that's where the way one way on to goes, but it stretches, I think, almost back to Wickham Lake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge... But really good, you know, the back end of Warwick Grove Homestead, there there were good possibilities there for uh, an, another well if, if we were to, to need that. Mm -hmm. And this is a different aquifer from the one that is the Memorial Park no, plant? No, same, 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 same one, yeah. So if some, Just off so to it's, the side. So it's only a redundant well, it's not a redundant source? But it, it, it doesn't affect it because it's not in kind of the zone of influence that, of well number two, yeah. one and two. Yeah, so the, if one the, well the, was the, contaminated. The zone of influences are distinct okay. for each of the wells. Um, and, you know, I guess, you know, if there was localized contamination for either of them, it wouldn't affect necessarily affect the other. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So. So now's the next steps. And the next step it would be to submit to the Department of Health so they can review the project. And uh, they're of course going to make comments. And that's what they do. Okay. Uh, did just submit for Bill Degotion and got no comments. But that was kind of an emergency. <coughs> pleased with that. But they're going to make some comments on the design for sure. And that's good. Somebody should uh, you know, be looking out for everybody. Any feel for their turnaround time? It's going to be a little while, I would say, probably before everything is said and done, another six to seven months. Um, immediately, Steve at the health department will tell you, well, our, our queue is 60 days and so on. Um, 
but that thing for Goshen was an emergency. They approved it within a week. Yeah. So they, they are responsive if, if there's a need. Um, but this has to get approval, but it also has to go to bid. Um, there was the map planning report that was done, but I don't know what the funding mechanism the vote is going to use for this is. So that's something maybe to start thinking about, too. But definitely, yeah. Should be some funding opportunities uh, that will come out. I'm sure that you could probably take advantage. I'm not sure if you put this on the uh, the IUP. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it is on. Is it on the the one year list? I'm not sure which. Okay. Um, you should check that. The, the the second infrastructure bill that came out. If you want to use that money for water and wastewater projects, it should be on the one year list, not the multi year list. <coughs> So you should work to get that moved on to that. That, that deadline was uh, recent. Um, but there'll be other funding opportunities that come out too. There was the, um, uh, the WIA funding that was just announced a couple months ago. There was seven awards in Orange County. Our firm got two of them. Um, we got $3 million for the Village of Goshen to completely revamp their uh, water treatment plant. And uh, another uh, grant for the Village of Florida and for a project that actually was already funded at their wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so um, I, I think there are good opportunities for water and sewer funding right now for sure. We got uh, another uh, a number of other awards as well too this year. What was the percentage of the grant? Was it 30 percent or 50? Um, in terms of the two grants yeah, that were received, so uh, well, what's the what was the local share versus the? So Florida, we already had received a seven hundred and something thousand dollar grant for their UV wastewater treatment system, and we got another seventy or eighty thousand dollars. So basically, that whole project is going to be paid for. Oh wow! Uh, Goshen got the max grant. Um, we three. got them three million dollars, which is the maximum you could get in that round of funding. And that's going to handle about 50% of their facility. And New Windsor had like a $42 million project and they got like $8 million. So <coughs> nothing to seize at for sure, but you know, a much smaller portion of, the, of what the total cost is. Um, uh, earlier this year, we got a million dollars for Long Hill to replace a lot of their water meters, <coughs> which was a, a significant uh, portion of that cost and, and the rest of that. Funding for the village of Florida to do their, their UV was earlier this year, too. What was the original budget for this project? Their original budget that was that uh, came to us, I think, was in the $700,000 range. But that was only part of the map plan and report. And I, the whole project wasn't really vetted at that point. That was just uh, uh, kind of an uh, overall estimate for the project. And that was... Those numbers were probably arrived at in 2017 or 2018, so it's four years old, I would say, at this point. I don't remember. That was before uh, we started the design. Um, that was done by KC, and uh, it's 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 pretty outdated right now. So this is a this is the final di design. Are you going to be sharing the your final cost estimate with the board? Oh uh, yeah, we can go over it now. I have a copy of what we think the cost is and I can circulate that. I didn't bring seven copies of that or however many copies there are of that. Um, but we think the subtotal for construction is going to be a little over $900,000. There was some planning, engineering, inspection costs that, are, uh, that were higher than what was actually uh, included, but uh, we did them as percentages here. And then there's going to be some other costs for your financing and whatnot. So right now the the total cost is about 1.3, but I think that's probably um, over because that's uh, about sixty thousand dollars more in, in soft costs, and you know I'm not sure what your financing costs are going to be. You'll have to you know that'll pan out I guess when you decide what you're doing, whether you're getting a bond or how you're going to finance everything as well. Uh, yeah. Even if you get a grant, there's a couple percentage. Uh, administrative fees that even EFC makes you include. If you could 
email that to sure. me, um, and I'll see that it's distributed. To the yeah, if you board. want, you can have this copy. It's fresh, and I'll email it too. Okay. All right. Okay. You have this. You can see uh, we broke things down pretty uh, detailed. Yeah. Detailed it's on there. Detailed breakdown. Yeah. Thank you. But we'll send it electronically too. Okay. Um, so at this point, I guess I'm not sure if you want to discuss it more internally and before we <coughs> submit to the health department, or um, if you want to review the plans and uh, we could always talk further. Um, but there will be some time for them to approve things and whatnot, so we should consider that as well. And you said that Keith, Keith kind of has, you know, he's given his thoughts and he's he feels good about this design. Yeah, I, I, I literally, uh, my partner and I, um, yeah, I know Keith very well. Like my, Keith used to fish at my partner's aunt's house up in Calicoon. And two days ago, you know, we were in a meeting and we had a question on a different type of system. We're like, let's just call Keith and get his opinion. So even on stuff that he's not, well, we're not working on with him, we, you know, look for his opinion on stuff because we think he's a pretty, uh, pretty reliable operator. And two, he doesn't hesitate to offer his opinion. <laughs> um, and uh, I think if you uh, speak to any of the other communities that we work with, we work really closely with the operators on all the facilities because, uh, you know, we're not going to be there every day to operate things. Yeah. And uh, they're the ones that are inheriting the decisions. A hundred percent. You know, we, like I was mentioning, we got that funding for Goshen. The first thing we did was went and met with the, the operators um, and said, okay, this is what we want. Give us your whole wish list and we'll get what we can with what the budget is and then um, but we need to know everything that's wrong with the facility now so we can make the more holistic plan yeah. and mm -hmm. um, you know obviously you don't get everything you want everything's on your christmas list but you you would try to do as much as we can and also make things work the, the as easy as we can yeah could you get two full sets of plans to us uh, one I'll see that Keith gets, and the other one I'll we'll leave here in Village Hall so the sure. trustees can have a look at That'd the entire great. package. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I think hopefully, in fairly short order, we'll be able to to get back to you. Uh, okay. With uh, yeah, let's submit it to the health department. Um, I see in this uh, list though a sca the SCADA system. Is it included it in there? How it much is, is the number for that? Uh, it's uh, um, 19,700. Okay, so we probably put some uh, initial controls in there. It probably doesn't include everything that Keith was hoping for, but it probably includes some basic communication between here and... And uh, well, 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 we'll, we'll make sure he you yeah. know, checks yeah. out the yes. plans to see <laughs> yeah. what's included. So. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Glad and to come back again if you want to go over anything else. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. You've been very thorough, and I think having the, the larger plan, set of plans here will, will be helpful for everybody. Yeah, I and can leave. This is a full-size set. It doesn't have the detail sheets, but, again, I, I think the detail sheets are just the masonry walls and those things, too. Okay. So I will leave these okay. with okay. the yeah. same thing that you have there. Great. Um, and I'll get you another set, too. Yeah. It's no okay. problem. I'm passing through here. Regardless. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys. Have Thanks, a good Jason. night. Thank, Thank you. you, Jason. Appreciate it. Oh boy, the fruition of a long. Yeah. I think Jason lives in Warwick too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so under correspondence this evening, we have uh, two letters, one that's not on the agenda, and that comes from um, Hello Warwick, and um, I would like to read that because I think it's a really wonderful letter. And then uh, there's also a letter from Jay Myro, which we'll read as well since it's a short agenda, but they're important letters, I think. So uh, Dear Mayor Newhart, 
Since our launch in early April 2021, we are pleased to report that HelloWarwickValley.com has just celebrated its first anniversary and has already become a well-received and followed website by individuals and businesses in our communities. As you know, Hello Warwick Valley was initially funded by Community Together, the Town of Warwick and the Villages of Warwick, Greenwood Lake, Pine Island, and Florida. The website will be self-supporting for ongoing updates and maintenance, and your continued support will help sustain the website for the, un uh, for the foreseeable future. Our volunteer uh, Hello Warwick Valley crew thanks you wholeheartedly for your support of our initiative. We recognize that you, along with many organizations and businesses in our beautiful valley, work very hard to create and maintain a vibrant community, as well as events and activities for the rest of us to enjoy. Whether experiences, eating, drinking, establishments, shops, places to rest, relax, stay, community organizations, sports, or nonprofits, your contributions to our community are appreciated. And we are very excited to, to help spread the word about all the great reasons the Warwick Valley continues to be loved by local residents and visitors. The team at Hello Warwick Valley would greatly appreciate your, your, continue, your continuing to share this initiative through your network and information channels such as websites, social media, newspaper columns, in addition to being mentioned at the public meetings, as we are tonight. Please never hesitate to reach out to us at hellowarvalley.com. Uh, uh, um, what is that? Forward slash. Forward slash. Forward slash contact. Um, if you have any questions at all, with sincere gratitude, the Hello Warwick Valley team. So that's a really nice letter, and it's a been uh, an, an incredible uh, creation actually it started from kind of the, the ground up and uh, and it has had an impact I believe on the community overall and um, so Carly you're involved of course and do you want to say a few words maybe about where where you think uh, War Hello Warwick Valley is going where it's going <clears throat> well um, there's a steering committee that is comprised of folks from the different villages, a uh, variety of nonprofits and the four chambers of commerce. And each kind of season, the steering committee meets and talks about sort of what is needed to help connect the community to itself, you know, in this way uh, for the following season. And during the last steering committee meeting, it was discussed that maybe the steering committee needs to be sort of formalized and, and with a formal board. Uh, so it's a non, it is a nonprofit, it's under the umbrella of community together, but that all of the sort of entities would benefit from having it be kind of a formalized board. So the group is working on developing bylaws, um, also working on uh, mechanisms to kind of bring in more volunteers and, and provide uh, more opportunities for people that have reached out interested in volunteering uh, to participate. And then uh, there's also an exploration of sort of a formal MOU so that the different entities can collaborate to pursue grant funding and uh, to help advance AIDS. That's great. It's, uh, it's amazing how quickly it all happened and how robust it is. So it's, yeah. Um, and it, in, it is, in essence, a, uh, it's so, driven by tourism, but it does. I think it's a tool for all of us for the entire town. So it's a, it's really great. So. Yeah, actually, it was it was both purposes, you know, um, to connect the community to itself. So there's a participate section, and um, close to all of the nonprofits are are in there. There's still some that are we're working on getting up, um, but that part is something that I think is going to evolve and become more and more robust over time. Mm -hmm. All the different ways that people can participate in the community and engage directly in addition to kind of the shops and the restaurants and hiking, biking, fishing, bird boating. <laughs> and are we linked to it? Yeah, the website is linked. It, okay. Yeah. Okay. It says Hello Warwick on it, so okay. it could be Hello Warwick Valley. But. Okay. Good. Um, so the, the other uh, letter we have is uh, from Bluestein Shapiro, Frank and Barone uh, from Jay Myro. Uh, dear Mayor Newhart and Village Trustees, I represent 13 Forrester LLC with respect to its site plan that was granted conditional site plan approval by the Planning Board for its property at 13 Forrester Avenue. 
During the planning board process, it was discussed that my client would like to add second story apartments to the approved commercial building. As you're aware, apartments are not permitted, uh, not a permitted use in the light industrial LI zoning district. In lieu of a formal petition, please consider this letter a request to amend the LI district to allow for apartments as a specified use that at, at least allows them on a second floor of a first floor commercial building. I'm advised that the current draft comprehensive uh, plan update, update discusses the benefits of such apartments as a means of providing much needed affordable housing and other benefits. Let me know if you require any additional information from me when this matter may be placed on the village board meeting for consideration. Thank you for your courtesies. Respectfully, um, J. R. Myra. So. so with that, I will open it up to the floor. And Mr. Kennedy. No, I'm just here to, <laughs> You're just here to, to listen, really. <laughs> but, uh, you know, of course, because it's our project, we're interested in seeing that come to fruition. Right. Uh, if, if possible. But, but more so than that is... Uh, the comprehensive plan moves along. I do think it's a good uh, um, idea for the village as a whole. The LI zone seems right for that type of change, uh, so it makes a lot of sense. And taking other projects on Elm Street that, you know, if they were um, maybe more residential and apartment use, it might have been a different scenario with the neighbors, things of that, you know, nature. So I'm in support of it, <laughs> not mm -hmm. just for myself, but I think it's good for the village as a whole. And uh, hopefully, uh, you guys will consider it. Can you remind us of what the planned use for the first floor is? Uh, that development? On 13 floor, sir. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at an end cap restaurant on the Church Street side, the Forester Church Street side. And then I think there's about 5,000 square feet of retail, so it'd be three maybe retail spaces, various uses. It could be one use, depending on what comes. I mean, we talked at the comprehensive plan about markets and things of that nature. I mean, I would like to see a butcher, I would like to see a bakery. I'd things of that nature. I don't know if uh, it's big enough space for a true market, you know, um, store, if, that, if you will, but um, lots of retail uses could fit in there. Hopefully something that helps, you know, the village and helps the residents with their needs, their daily needs. So, and maybe apartments upstairs. Uh, how large is that zone uh, besides your property? Do you know? Are you aware of that? I, I haven't looked at a zoning map to... I think it goes uh, down to Coquito and it kind of comes through that whole strip on... It really runs along the railroad, right? Oh, so great. Thank you. I think from Red Street to our side, yeah, you have it right there. Yep. And it runs back towards, you know, all the way back towards uh, Jones Chemical down the railroad line. How many apartments are proposed? Uh, we don't yes. have them proposed yet. I mean, we have, I think it would be around 5,000 square feet to work with on the second story. So, you know, if you could fit in six maybe apartments, it all depends on square footage and, and what the code will read on that as well. Let me see. So it's, oops. <laughs> so it's this, all this kind of brown shaded area. Okay. okay. So uh, it's really along the the railway corridor, right? Yep. And the stream corridor too. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of those parcels are smaller today than they were back in the day. You know, you used to have, you know, the Georgia Pacific site was a pretty large site. Right. Um, a lot of these sites aren't that big where you're going to get a 50,000 square foot warehouse. Um, you know, trucking is difficult for that type of use as well. Not that it's uh, a bad use, but it's just not. I, I think today's, you know, what, what the village is in need of is more affordable housing, if you will. We've talked about that a lot. Um, apartments are more affordable than the traditional home. And, uh, and there's, I think there's a need for it for young people for uh, single adults, et cetera. Well, it's mixed use and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and basically we do have that ability within the commercial district through right. CB. Mm -hmm. 
It sort of would be, I think, in some ways, an expansion of that central business di district yeah. to have that be mixed, allow that to be mixed use. It actually might soften it. I mean, in a, in a way, you know, as, as you point out, the Elm Street project. Um, Can I swap the camera? Yeah. Right, yeah, I, I mean, I races. Uh, no, uh, uh, John Christensen. Okay. Yeah. And, and even uh, Mr. Iraces. And even project, Mr. Iraces, yeah. You know, I mean, it, uh, an apartment project is probably a softer use than a, you know, uh, an operating business like a restaurant. Uh, not to say that's a bad use, but, you know, I, it, the public might not have liked that either, an apartment complex. But right. I would argue that it might have been an easier sell than, you know, the kitchen, the smells, the noise, the, the, everything that comes with the idea of something like that. Yeah. And I believe Mr. Erase uh, came to us right. really uh, talking about um, apartments on his, uh, on his parcel, right. but then he put it on the back burner as he was uh, developing his own office in the, uh, in the former uh, grain elevator. So, right. Yeah, I believe at some point that was his intent, and, then, and again, I think it's a good use for that spot. I mean, you could put retail there as well, or, or, or mixed use, um, but even um, straightforward apartments, first floor, second floor, would make a lot of sense, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if there's a room to do a, a special use for an entire apartment building, you know, not mixed use, and then there's, you know, just the regular permitted use that allows for second and third story or second story. Um, what are other? I'm sorry. No, just giving more flexibility to the idea of apartments. Can you remind us what other allowable uses there are for the light industrial? I could not. There's, uh, I, there's can you, I can tell you. I can tell you. It's ahead. pretty. It, it's actually pretty broad. Pretty broad. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. There's definitely a lot you can do in there. I, I mean, th retail and everything mm -hmm. that goes with it. Actually, so. apartments and a restaurant are probably the most. Benign. <laughs> yeah, that's what well, I, I think my only con They're not allowed. Yeah. Apartments well, are not restaurants. allowed. Apartments, yeah. but restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. I think my only concern would be that ensuring compatibility moving forward. So if you had an, if you had apartments go in above sort of retail with butcher and stuff like that, that you don't then end up with something that is an intensive. I, I would I, I would want to look at like the I guess the full spectrum of. I think it, I mean there would have to the planning board would have to look at it many ways because of parking and you know just the impacts it would have mm -hmm. um, on the existing neighborhoods as you know that's one of the requirements of course. And the other idea behind it is that it's difficult to put second story uses on these buildings. So if you want to maximize density in within the village borders. Um, one story is great, but it, you know it, you could afford to do two. What do you put up there? And office has been struggling for a long time. There's an argument that it's coming back, but I've I've had it and it's difficult. <laughs> um, and to put retail on the second stories is, is very difficult as well. So mm -hmm. it really comes down to you know, like you said, the CV district already has that type of zoning, and you see it work well for many 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 years. Where there's apartment above retail, pizza shops, etc. Um, so it's really just expanding that idea into other areas. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious how we would explore this and how we would maybe, um, I mean, I would rather, I think it, it's very interesting, but I, I think the, we as a board need more details as to how it would become an ordinance. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I would, I would hate to wait until after the comprehensive master plan. And the reason why I say that is that that will be just literally a year, you know. Right. And I think that the, I see the need is much stronger, and real estate values are are um, robust and still. So I don't know. I don't know what does the board think. What do you? What? It, it seems like what's being asked for is. <clears throat> the board to consider in the light industrial zone allowing second story apartments mm -hmm. to an approved commercial building. So, so it is so is it, 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 would, it wouldn't as necessarily that. be a zone change for the property. It would be a change in the zoning in what's allowed in the zoning 
throughout the light industrial zone. Mm -hmm. So we, we'd have to figure out, you know, how to craft that. Um, and just check and see if there's anything that needs to be removed, too, from the light industrial. That may complicate the whole process, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, maybe one thing at a time. It, because it, 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 it may be that the way we structure the change to allow apartments is allow them only in conjunction with certain other um, uses. Within a certain distance. Well, with it, no uses. In other words, we just say, okay, um, you, you can't put it above... A car um, mechanic. A, 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 a car dealership right. or a mechanic or whatever. Um, it's got to be above, uh, you know, a, certain types of retail locations or whatever, some, or, yeah. or retail uses or restaurants, you know. So, you know, I, I think we've got a lot of examples of it in the village on Main Street. Um, so it, it's probably something that, you know, we could come to an agreement on. Yeah, I think it's a nice opportunity to, to work on the, a lot of the concepts we've been exploring with the comprehensive plan and, and could be a missed opportunity, you know, if not. Your thoughts? Um, I'm open to addressing it holistically. Uh, but I'm more inclined to do it in a, on a one-off project, such uh, as this. Such as this, yeah. So just do a... I think it's the path of least resistance. I think it addresses immediate need. Uh, other than Otherwise, we'd have to think about the entire strip of light industrial zoning and, and think about what should be included or excluded. It's just... A, it, I you think mean that, the, the zone itself? The zone itself. I yeah. think that, that's just a much broader discussion. I think it's a fine discussion. Right. I'm open to it, but I, I don't think it's going to solve anything. So just term. do a special use. Uh, yeah. So there's what, a provision for that. hypothetical. What, what would that entail? Special. Well, there isn't. I don't believe there's provision within our zoning to allow as a special use by the board these these apartments. So what did, in the light so what, did, what did Mr. Iracy do? He he applied for. Um, Actual but, apartments, uh, but but he well he applied for it to be central business district. But did he get a uh, a ZBA? Um, he got a ZBA, right? Mm -hmm. So is is that something that a, a, a way to go? Uh, we we would certainly consider that. I mean, I, I just I think it's the highest and best use for our particular property. But I do think it's the highest and best use for that whole corridor. Um, so whatever you folks, you know, whatever direction you kind of advise, we'll go in that direction to try to get it done. Um, but I would urge you to consider, and, and you know, I like the idea of just taking my property in at first, but I think the idea is to, to make the whole zone um, a little more flexible with a, a use that today is, is pretty prevalent, right? It is something we want in the village. So. Um, to me, I, I don't know the legalities of it, of course, but I think it's something that should be discussed on the basis of how do we just add, you know, this use to the zone, whether it be a special use or a permitted use or a mixture of, of the two. Um, I don't know how complicated that is, mm -hmm. um, but it's not a giant zone, right? It's it, it kind of, you, you know what the parcels are for the most part. Um, I don't think there's any real conflict without digging deeper into it with that you know would come up if you were to put you know some kind of mixed use or apartments on those plots that are available in the li zone so um i think as a as a whole for the village and, you know the betterment of the village it would be best to do the whole zone as either special use or a permitted use to allow for accessory apartments or you know second story for third story <coughs> floor in, in, in their entirety. Mm -hmm. So are, are you envisioning um, kind of individual co condos that could be individually owned or a rental only? No, no, apartment? I would do rental only. And, and we envision it as, you know, again, for young people to come home and they can yeah. live in the village. Uh, also, you know, divorcees that need a place to go. And, and also employees, right? So if you have the kitchen crew at the restaurant on 13 floor so that gets built, you know, maybe two of them end up living in the apartment, and uh, that's certainly a need uh, yeah. for, for those folks to uh, have places to stay. I have a restaurant. I, I know that they're, they have difficulties finding places to live, 
you know, again, are they exactly affordable? Maybe not necessarily, but they're more affordable than, than other houses and, and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, we would do regular rental apartments. We would not condo it. And I wouldn't suggest that be in the code either, but I mean, maybe that is something to look at. I didn't think that way, though. Now, the structure, that structure, I don't know if we, that could be a case by case. Yeah, well, I mean, again, condoing and things of that nature make it difficult for the property owner, yeah. and the, uh, that, that's a whole other ball game, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, that could be written into the code how it's structured. It can't be condos, or it can be, or you know, different factors that don't how you know, different ways to make them into apartments. We're talking one bedroom, I think, to keep it. Mm -hmm more affordable and uh, you know, smaller, I guess, with parking requirements, etc. We yeah. have done the calculations. I believe it does work. Um, Corey, what are your thoughts? Um, I guess I'm just thinking, you know, um, if a second, does it have a second story that can be apartments already if it has a second story? Or if it has a first story, could you build a second story to have residential units. We, we've designed it for right the, now to have a second story on it. I just mean for the entire district itself. I mean, is that, because I just am it concerned that how it's that looks yeah. like it runs through our historic district. And if we're adding things, I just, I, I don't, I don't know if any, it's hard to see on that. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> While they're working on that, are you envisioning that they would also have like, like a little balcony, a little place to? I know this is like detailed, but well, they, they could. <laughs> they would be able to go outside, and you on know. On our design, they do have a little balcony. Okay. Um, I don't really know how to wash out. Wait, right, so design. high street. We are, uh, you know, in front of the <clears throat> ARC, so that's kind of where all that will get dictated. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just from a quality of life perspective, yeah. you know. Yeah. Having yeah. some kind of quick so access. That is, Initially, we didn't like that that's because uh, of right, people erase. putting their okay, so it's not clothing not lines out there yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, or yeah. what have you, or storage. It just one. becomes a junk you know, spot. But, mm. uh, you can I don't think it's in that storage pieces, district, so per se. That's the idea behind but it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's, I think that's all. Your stage. And there is like a um, driveway, and then there's a car repair place there. Okay. It's, it's pretty pretty industrial, actually. Okay. Yeah. This is all of a uh, cable vision business back there. So, I mean, it would apply for some buildings and wouldn't apply for others. It depends upon the nature yeah, of the and building. Ground up, and you know, again, and the code can be written in specific ways to make sure it's controlled the way the village wants it to be. I, I think the biggest thing and we've talked about on the committee is, is you know, architectural review. Right. Making sure it fits in. Right. Whether it's one story, two stories, or three stories. Right. Um, it's more about the character of the building than somewhat the use. Right. I don't mean that lightly, but, you know, I think apartments are a fine use as long as they're built well, you know, and look attractive. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's our thought behind it. So, so my thought was, um, I know Barry, you've got a lot on your plate, but I think you would be the perfect, you and Tom would be perfect to kind of form this and bring it to the board um, and we can, Tom, go up for the you task. You mean a more of a holistic change? No, I was just thinking for something, you know, even if it's simple, it still, it still has to, you know, be, I mean, holistic in that, Allowing you that mean LI, use. You mean the whole LI district as opposed to a one-off well, project? The whole, the whole LI okay. district, yeah. As far as mixed use. Right. Right. But not, I wouldn't go into detailing what, what Carly was saying about uses because I think that's a whole other. Yeah. That might get to be. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Okay. You're, you're up yeah. for the yeah. challenge? Yeah. <laughs> so okay okay so we're gonna chew on this <laughs> yeah 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 I mean I think it really makes sense and and as we've discussed it in the master plan committee it, it really is the, the trend it's the way we're going 
sure. we're not looking for the, those kind of industrial uses anymore in the in the village. Mm. Uh, we don't have the a, a railway that is needing what it needed way way back when, and uh, even I mean, Georgia Pacific is a perfect example. The kind of mixed use, though it's not it, no housing, right. but just the number of bus the businesses that have uh, found a home there. Yeah, has, fantastic. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. This is sort of in line with the missing middle as well, because right. it's like not intensive mm -hmm. apartment apartment and complex. It's not sort of the big single family. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. It's use small number. Good. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Your good luck tomorrow. Yeah. Good luck with your yeah, surgery. You. See you next meeting. <laughs> okay. So we'll move on to uh, motions and Barry. Motion to accept the bid from Skyward Electric Inc. in the amount of $69,975 for the Hilltop Pump Station Generator Project as per the recommendation of engineer Matthew Blake, Blake Engineering, PLLC. Second. Okay. On. Oh. Discussion? Okay. Um, Sadie, Sadie had indicated that the original budgeted amount was... Um, Fifty thousand dollars, and so um, there will have to be some like moving of budget around, but that it wasn't, it didn't seem to be a problem. Right. Good. Well, thank you also for giving us that information as a board because that's important. <laughs> so, so we only had two bids. One was nearly double. Yes. The other. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't give me a ton of confidence that. What if we had a third that was? Well, we wish we had lower that third. Yeah. right around this yeah. one or up around the other one. That, yeah, that's my Something point. to balance it out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, he, it was sent out to, as, I'm trying to, did he mention that? How many received? It was a fair number. He, 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 sub, um, he sent them out to a fairly decent sized list, probably six firms i want to say and you know and only two a number of them declined yeah because they're really either really busy or they weren't it wasn't something that they felt that they could handle um, and you know i mean i mean skyward has looked skyward knows the what the other bid was and if they went back and said uh oh, we made a big mistake. We missed this and this. They would have come back to us and said, "Look, you know, we made an honest mistake, and we, you know, we want you to consider either rebidding it or uh, allowing us to to make the change." Um, so it's, um, and you never know, you know, the the second bid that we got that was one hundred and thirty some thousand. I mean, that could have just, you know, been, well, you know, if we can get it at 130 some thousand, we're going to make major money on it. Let's see who bids and let's see where we come in. So there, there are a lot of tactics that go on in municipal I mean, there's bidding. design specifications that any of them would have to meet, right? Absolutely. It's not like we're not no, no, getting no, something. No, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't see any you know, potential downside to awarding it at this price, especially <coughs> since they haven't raised an objection to the, uh, to and, their bid. And Skyward is a very reputable firm as yes. well. Has the village used them before? Uh, have we used them in, I know the town, the town has so. used them quite extensively in the prison yeah. project, yeah. Yeah, I recognize Tam, but not Skyward. Yeah. So. Yes, but Tam does a lot of work for the village. The, um, the fifty thousand dollars. When was that budget put together? That was this that was put together for this um, this year's budget. So it's in this year's budget at fifty thousand. Yeah, that no, I mean expectation. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't recall when when that was Matt estimated. Did that and when okay. it was estimated. Yeah. yeah. So do we have nineteen thousand to move around to cover the difference? I imagine at this point of the of the budget, yes. 
Later on. <laughs> later on. <laughs> later on. <laughs> later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I think that given the disparity in the two bids, given the um, issue related, <coughs> issues related to delivery of equipment, and this is pretty much all equipment, I mean, you've got a generator, you've got a transfer switch, and those are both very <coughs> expensive items. The ancillary stuff is not a very big deal. So, um, you know, to wait. You know, go through the process again and wait. I'm concerned that we wouldn't get the sixty-nine thousand again. But if power goes out, water needs to be still pumped to the to everyone's house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry about that. You're okay. Yeah, I think it went down the wrong yeah. hole. <coughs> Any more questions? So we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to grant permission to Village of Warwick employee Jennifer Manti to carry over <coughs> two vacation days. I don't know. Section. Do that. Well. No. <laughs> I whispered. I don't know if we should do that. <laughs> of course. So we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That would have been awful. That would have been awful. <laughs> I might need you to read these actually because I might start calling. Okay, great. Um, motion to grant permission to We the People Warwick to use the Veterans Memorial Park Pavilion for an event on Sunday, July 17th, 2022, from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Request includes use of restrooms and village owned tables and chairs, completed park permits, security deposit, and proof of proper insurance have been received. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a motion to grant permission to Christchurch to use the baseball field at Stanley Deming Park for kickball for a kickball game on Tuesday, July 26, 2022, from 6:45 p.m. to 9 p.m. Completed park permit, proof of proper insurance, and security deposit have been received. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so. Um, Here's a moment of final comments from the board. What was not, uh, we didn't really have a discussion piece, though we did discuss um, the letter that came from um, Mr. Kennedy's attorney, from Mr. Myro. Um, the one thing that is out there still uh, that the board has to um, come to resolve is Bank Street and the, it, its closure and the request that it be reopened. And um, I know that um, um, Tom and Carly, you've had, you were kind of given the, the baton to carry and to try to figure this out. And last week, uh, Carly, you were, um, or Tom, you were not at the meeting, but we had, we were visited by three representatives from the farmer's market who were, were not, not uh, in favor of it being reopened. Um, this past Sunday, there were um, cones put down along the sidewalk, the interior of the sidewalk, that then at least gave the form of the market um, to what it would be if the street was to be reopened. Um, but the street was still closed. So um, anyway, and it's a discussion I think we need, I think we have to kind of figure this out because uh, Numbers of people are waiting. Well, see, it's, it sounds like the cones weren't in the space that I think the group had envisioned. No, they were not. So, yeah. so I was putting, putting that aside. The, and and they didn't. Um, so I know that Mike Mosier came down especially to look to do it to set it out, and uh, he got some uh, pushback, and so it was the the farmers that actually put out the cones the way they were configured so okay yeah just that just a backstory you know yeah um, I guess I'll I'll start and share my uh, perspective on this um, I, I, I I personally think it is worthwhile to um, have a trial period of sorts and open Bank Street provided that we can have enough orange barricades to leave just enough room for a one-way street width for cars to come down. 
<clears throat> right? That also leaves room for um, the partner tents, right? And full access for that the, the pedestrian red walkway to be used to go up to Main Street, back down to South Street. Uh, so provided that we can have enough of those orange barricades and we have a sign that we quite a large visible sign that we can make clear on South Street that it is one way only and is do not enter because we don't want people thinking they can come from South Street and try to turn up into Bank Street and be along there with the farmer's market. So if my thought is if we can do those things, I'd say for the rest of the um, season or at least see how it goes unless there's an incident, um, that way the business owners there can have um, you know people come to their business and uh, the parking tenants that are at the law office there. Um, I think that is a reasonable compromise. And we did hear some of that when talking to uh, the vendors at the farmer's market. That is something that, that they could live with. I understand their position is to keep it closed, but I think that's a good compromise and we can try it out. They did come to the meeting last week and say that they, I they had... I watched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the conversation that we had had at the farmer's market it shifted a little bit over time. <clears throat> Where does the police department stand relative to this question? Because uh, this was, the closure of Bank Street was initiated through discussions with them, and I certainly would, would think that we should get their input before we make a decision one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would like so we did not meet with the police department last week because of all of, you know, like the, the festival and the 4th of July folks being out of town. So we didn't ask to meet with them last week. So um, it was my hope that we would be able to kind of reach out and meet with both uh, Chief Rader and um, Cheryl Rogalski okay. in advance of the next board meeting and, okay. and work out some of those options. I know that is leaves time but you know what it, it, we had a big like a big holiday in the yeah. middle of this so the I, and also the, you know the market changes the uh, it grows i mean it, it it's not at peak yet you know it will it will be probably in another three or four weeks so um that's also something to to recognize but i would rather take this carefully yeah and um and and I agree. At, if if it does, if it is reopened, it is a trial, on some level. Uh, but I would really appreciate um, the police's input on it because I think that's critical. <clears throat> yeah, and I I was also, I'd also like to talk about other options in terms of parking for them. You know, so um my instincts say that that will not be a permanent solution even if we do it as a trial because uh, you know unless we can provide I, I you know just from a safety perspective um so would it be possible for example or acceptable for us to um bag a couple of the metered parking spaces right at the top of bank street that are easily accessible maybe to pex and to the realtor, you know, down. So it's not quite as far that folks would have to walk, but that they would, you know, have some designated parking. Uh, it might, might be, be a little tricky. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, it would have to clearly say, this spot is for PEX customers only. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if people in the midst of maneuvering would see it. You know, you know, on a busy main street. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I know, maybe, maybe, but we can. I definitely investigate that. And it's also taking. I know it's also taking parking spots from a busy main street. That's you know, right. so it's kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. But right. it's sort of. I think there's a bunch. I think there's a variety of possible ways for us to think through it. And I, I do recognize that folks feel a sense of urgency, but also that there's. I think a lot of due diligence. You know, needed. So, um, so onward to uh, talk to the police. Yeah. So Tom and I have the action items too, and that way we can also have the conversation together. Um, we wanted to kind of push the conversations 
that we've been having separately together. Okay. Good. Um, Corey, do you have any thoughts on this? I like the idea of the compromise, but I think there's more people that need to participate. Good. Um, final comments from the board? Any, anybody? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I guess, I guess yeah, it's yeah. my opportunity it's to see. rant. Um, <laughs> Here's your so moment. over the course of the last few days, the village has experienced uh, two sewer backups. Um, and uh, in clearing those backups, it was determined uh, that the, the cause of the backups was due to primarily wipes and other similar types of material um, that were in the sewer and uh, basically coming together and, and forming the blockages. The, the, the blockages were cleared um, with the use of mechanical equipment. Uh, we did have to call in someone who had equipment bigger and better than ours to clear one of the blockages. Um, so uh, um, it, it's in, certainly an added cost to the village. Um, you know, these materials uh, generally are um, called wipes, um, and that's the primary uh, material that causes the blockages, they come together and uh, uh, in the system. Um, you, you might flush them down individually in your house and once they get in the system with others, um, they tend to, I guess, come together and, and cause the blockages. So um, while, while it does say on some of the material that they are flushable wipes, um, they're not helpful to our system once they get in the system. Um, so the village would prefer that you don't use them. However, if you do uh, use them um, and can avoid flushing them, that would be helpful, especially the non-flushable kind. Um, and uh, um, use, use these wipes sparingly. Um, there's also another contributory, contributory problem, and that, that is uh, fats, oils, and grease that are found in the kitchen. Um, those should never be poured down the drain. Um, you should uh, remove them, put them in the garbage. Um, and when you're um, kind of cleaning up from, from your cooking, um, wipe out your pots and pans with uh, the fats, oils, and grease that's in them and put that in the garbage. Um, it will be very helpful and uh, we don't like to see these blockages uh, because they have, uh, you know, consequential problems uh, as a result. Uh, over time for the men to come out, because they usually don't happen during the work day, um, and, and also, um, you know, the, the environmental, potential environmental impact if the overflow is uh, significant out of the manhole and then gets into the storm sewer or, the, or our creeks. So thank you for allowing me to rant. <laughs> but maybe we have to put we have we do have some information on our website but maybe we have to you know, reinforce that reinforce it make it more yeah. obvious yeah. yeah maybe a video oh <laughs> uh, i don't know many people would want to see that <laughs> anything any anyone else i have a um so you and i met earlier this week with Karen Thomas. Yes, yes. Uh, with the community center. And um, we talked about doing, um, a after you had left actually, Karen and I talked about um, doing a workshop with uh, um, the, the Leadership Academy mm -hmm. uh, this summer on sort of the Memorial Park master plan. Oh, wonderful, so good. So we're tentatively scheduled for the 13th. She said she was gonna shoot you an email to see um, your availability. And so we're, I think we're excited about getting feedback from kids as yeah, well. Yeah. And then um, I think we're beginning to close in on the stakeholder advisory group based on an email that Raina sent yeah, tonight. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I and we've continued good. to get feedback in through the virtual suggestion box. And so I'll compile an email sometime over the course of the next week or so that gives everybody that, like what's what we've heard so far. Okay, great. <clears throat> Corey, anything? No rants. No, no rants. <laughs> okay. I, I, I do have one. Uh, just for, for those who are listening, we do see, just a reminder, we do see pedestrians in a crosswalk. It is state law to yield to the pedestrians. I find on Main Street all the time, people fly up on their phones. They're not looking. Their families, children crossing the street. 
um, I was right before I came in here. Just try to pay attention. That's it. That's my rant. I'm done. <laughs> I, uh, Yours was shorter than mine. Yeah, I'm of the school of when I get into this zone, the the business district, and um, to psychologically just kind of like step back and to slow down. I've, I've really tried to make that part of how I drive because there's just so much activity and it seems like it's, you know, things are coming from everywhere and anywhere. <laughs> so even though it's 25 miles, I try to do 20, you know, just so I can really clearly, you know, be ready <laughs> for anything. So, but it's... Be alert. That's very important. Yeah. And yeah. for the pedestrian as well, I, I know that when I cross, I want to make sure I've got eye contact with the car that's immediately coming in each direction before I proceed in front of that vehicle. Right. And, uh, by the way, I, I believe the DOT is going to look kindly upon our request for parking spots. So, But we haven't heard back from them completely, but it seems like they're... Oh, to, to make the lane more narrow? So it's well, like right in front of uh, Dunkin' okay. Donuts, there is, there is no parking. And so if somebody is stopped at, for a cross, at the crosswalk uh, to let pedestrians go by, somebody in back could actually swing around on the right-hand side and really cause havoc. And, uh, and Carly actually had that happen to her. So, and the reason why is that there's no striping, there's no parking, it's just kind of an open lane. And so uh, we reached out to the DOT to say, well, can we actually meter that area? And um, our intern, um, Wakely, uh, measured it all out and sent them all the specifications. He did a really great job. And so, uh, I think we will probably get their approval to be able to do that. So plus more parking and plus more parking. Plus more parking. Yes. Yeah, and it'll provide a visual barrier so people are not gonna. And also, it may <laughs> stop people from leaving the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot over the sidewalk, jumping, the curb. <laughs> jumping the curb, yeah. which they do now. So anyway, um, so we don't have executive session tonight. So could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. So moved. Yeah. Okay. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. I told you I'm never, ever going to get it right. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know why. <laughs>